never ever ever sing or listen to Frank Sinatra's My Way when you're in the Philippines. Don't do it because you literally might die. Written by Paul Anker for Frank Sinatra, My Way, sung at karaoke, is thought to be cursed in the Philippines. Now it is so cursed that it even has its own crime class with the police out there. There have been articles written about the alleged curse, and it's become such a problem that karaoke bars have banned it from their books. The song seems to incite crowds at bars and has led to a spate of killings. One reveler in the Philippines spoke to the New York Times about the song, saying, I used to like my way, but after all the trouble, I stopped singing it. You can get killed. Coming into number nine, we have Robert Johnson's Crossroads. The story goes that blues musician Robert Johnson met the devil at a crossroads and exchanged his soul for musical success. Yeah, he became legendary, but like a lot of musicians, he died aged 27. Many think his song Crossroads is cursed in itself. Bands who've covered it, including Leonard Skinner, the Allman Brothers, and Eric Clapton, have suffered losses and personal tragedies. Okay, up next at number eight, we have this spooky robot song that will actually send you mad. It's called I Feel Fantastic. In 2009, a creepy video of a robot singing the words I Feel Fantastic went viral. It's had over 13 million views, and nobody knows what's happening, other than it's totally horrifying. Some people reported feeling weird and vengeful after listening to the song. Some are convinced that it exists to brainwash listeners, for what purposes we don't know, but it can't be good. Unlike a lot of songs on this list, personally I don't think that this song is cursed, but it certainly was a driving force behind one of America's most notorious murderers. This makes some people pretty suspicious of it. Up next we have The Beatles' Helter Skelter. Criminally insane killer Charles Manson was convinced that the Beatles song Helter Skelter was a prophecy of an apocalyptic race war. Manson was inspired by the song which he believed was telling him to commit a high profile mass murder. Fueled by the song and his beliefs that the Beatles were angels, Charles Manson and his cult gang brutally murdered seven people. Okay. Surprisingly up next, we have Barney's I Love You. You might not know this, but the I Love You song from Barney the Dinosaur can send you mad. This song has a sick and dark past. Apparently it is the most overplayed torture song used by the CIA to torment prisoners. Music as a form of torture is a really interesting psychological concept, and apparently it's especially easy with this song. To be honest, I'm not surprised, I knew Barney was evil. Up next we have Insha G Utho. This song's curse started with a poet who wrote a sad tale about a man lost in a cold and pointless existence. I feel you sad man. Later singer Amina Ali Khan decided he wanted to turn it into a song. While it was well received, Khan died suddenly a few years later. Four years to the day after the songs original performance, the original poet behind the song died. Khan's son then became a successful musician and decided to perform the song, but he too passed away suddenly. I don't know, I wouldn't risk it. Coming into number four, we have Violet. Sonata in G minor. 19th century composer Giuseppe Tartini was a classic tortured artist. The devil appeared to him in a dream, where the Italian musician was convinced that he'd sold him his soul. When he woke, he tried to capture an idea, a sound from the dream. He then wrote Violin Sonata in G minor. While he believed that this was the best song he'd ever composed, a lot of orchestral players will not perform it as they consider it to be cursed. At number three, we have any song any sound played above 20 kilohertz. Did you know that a sound wave can kill you? These days terrorists are experimenting with sonic weapons to harm people. If humans are exposed to 177 decibel sound waves at 8 hertz, the sound waves can actually mess with their breathing. The European Space Agency have claimed that humans should never get locked inside their large European acoustic facility as the sonic onslaught would kill a human. In theory, any song or sound could kill you. It's actually been calculated that 240 decibels could make a human and head explode. Nice. Okay, now with that in mind, back to cursed music, but perhaps it's got something to do with the way the sound's delivered. Never listen to anything from this cursed glass harmonica at number two. Benjamin Franklin invented this haunting instrument in 1761. Being made of glass, the instrument creates a haunting, piercing sound, a bit like rubbing a wet finger around the edge of a glass. Haunting, sure, but rumours started circulating in the 18th century that the glass instrument was causing both musicians and their listeners to go insane. People People started calling the instrument cursed, leading to its disappearance from concert halls. You can listen to it for yourself, but like, 
I wouldn't advise it. Finally at number 1, the most cursed song of all time that has led to hundreds of suicides, we have Gloomy Sunday. Gloomy Sunday was penned in 1933 by a depressed Hungarian named Rez Seres. As he penned the song, Rez was a failing musician whose love had just left him. His sadness clearly translates into the song, which became his first real success in the music industry. Little did he know that he had unleashed a cursed song into the world. Both he and the girl he wrote the song about killed themselves, as did hundreds of other people in the world, mainly in Hungary. People were found dead holding the sheet music for the song, others wrote lyrics in their suicide notes, and one guy even shot himself because he couldn't get the tune out of his head. Billie Holiday covered the song in 1941, causing a fresh spate of suicides. The song was so problematic that the BBC banned it from their airwaves. Coming in at number 10, we have Heavy Metal Suicide Solution. In the 1980s, heavy metal was at its height in popularity, and rock legends like Judas Priest and Ozzy Osbourne were busy swinging their hair and biting bats, but that wasn't all they were doing apparently. According to sensationalist media and some parents, these rockers were writing satanic cursed melodies with subliminal messages that encouraged kids and teenagers to kill themselves. Osbourne's smash track Suicide Solution was blamed for a number of self-harming teens, as well as the death of depressed teen John McCollum. Ozzy was even taken to court over it. You might be alright listening to this, but you are not alright composing this. We have the infamous Curse of the Ninth, which obviously is coming in at number 9. In the world of classic music, there is a huge superstition around the Ninth Symphony. It is widely believed that great composers only have 9 symphonies in them, and once it's written, they will never complete a tenth. Seemingly, it started with good old Ludwig van Beethoven, who died 3 years after completing completing his seminal ninth symphony. Unfortunately, he was unable to complete his tenth because he kinda died in the middle. Other victims of the ninth have been Gustav Mahler, Franz Schubert, Antonin Dovrek, Anton Bruckner, Kurt Attenberg, Ralph Vaughan Williams, Roger Sessions, Egon Velleis, Alexander Glazunov, and Malcolm Arnold. The most recent victims of the ninth were Vaughan Williams in 1958 and Alfred Schneidtke in 1998. A lot of composers were very very nervous of the curse. Schoenberg even wrote, It seems that the ninth is a limit. He who wants to go beyond it must pass away. It seems as if something might be imparted to us in the tenth which we ought not know yet. Those who have written a ninth stood too close to the hereafter. Scary words from Schoenberg. He didn't write a ninth symphony, so perhaps he was wise. Coming into number eight, we have the Dead Man's Curve Curse. Strangely, this cursed song written by Jan and Dean seemed to preempt Jan's fate two years ahead of time. The pair wrote a song called Dead Man's Curve in 1964, but in 1966, Jan ran his Stingray Corvette car off the road at a point on a stretch of road in Los Angeles called, you guessed it, Dead Man's Curve. It's very spooky, and really sadly, Jan Berry spent months in a coma and was partially paralyzed. He suffered permanent brain damage. He did semi recover by 1978 and performed a few shows with Dean Torrance, but he was never the same again. Perhaps the song was a warning rather than a curse, but it was a warning that sadly wasn't heeded. Coming into number seven, we have Ring Around the Rosie. We all know the dark story surrounding Ring Around the Rosie, right? We have different versions of it in different countries, but in the UK, it goes a little something like this. Ring a ring a rosy, a pocket full of posy, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Hope you enjoyed that, thanks. Some people sang ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Either way, it's creepy. The seemingly innocent kids playground song is actually a dark little ditty about contracting the plague and dying. The ring of rosy refers to the marks plague victims would contract. The posies were flowers people would keep in their pockets to smell, as back in those days, they thought that disease was spread by bad smells. The tissue part was the sneezing sick people would do, or the ashes was a reference to the burned bodies. The all fall down part is, you guessed it, death, the final falling. So when kids are all singing this and throwing themselves on the floor, they're literally pretending to die and they don't know it. Freaky. I guess this isn't as freaky as imagining a plague doctor singing. Have you ever seen those beaky guys? They freak me out. I don't think you have too much to fear from this song because the plague isn't quite what it used to be. This next song also made a composer nervous. We have Alexander Skarabin's Piano Sonata No. 6. Russian composer Alexander Skarabin was a bit of an eccentric to say the least. The 
pianist was influenced by Chopin and he loved an atonal dissonant style. Like many late 19th and early 20th century composers, Scarabin had an artist's soul and loved the concept of synesthesia. This is where you associate colours with sounds, so like Rebecca to me might be like red. Maybe it's just because I like the colour red. I don't know. Anyway, the composer wrote Piano Sonata Number no. 6 in 1911 and he was terrified. Terrified of it. He was so scared of his creation that he wouldn't even play it. He said that he was afraid of its darkness and didn't want to expose himself or his audience to the horrifying atonality. According to his biographer, the sixth sonata is a nether star. They said its dark and evil aspect embraces horror, terror, and omnipresent unknown. The biographer also said that when Scarabin would play the music for his friends, he would seem frightened and stare off into the distance as if he could see something that wasn't wasn't there. Freaky. Coming into number 5 we have Babylon by David Gray. If you want it, come and get it for crying out loud. Babylon. If you're hearing David Gray's soft rock 1998 ballad Babylon, you might actually be in trouble. It seems the unassuming 20 year old track is used as a torture song at Guantanamo Bay prison. The track was chosen because of its religious undertones. Babylon is a biblical reference. The idea behind music torture is that it invades a person's mental space, breaking in their thoughts with constant sound, leading a captive with nowhere to hide. It is pretty dark actually if you think about it, there's no space for your thoughts. In part 1 we also talked about how the military uses Barney as a dinosaur as a torture track which is also pretty disturbing. Another one to scare musicians, we have the infamous 27 Club at number 4. The 27 Club is a kind of rock and roll version of the 9th symphony curse and refers to rock legends dying in their 27th year. At first it seems like a bit of a coincidence, Brian Jones, Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin died when they were 27. But then people started to look back through history and realised that a lot of musicians of note died age 27. Robert Johnson, Nat Jeff, Rudy Lewis, they all died age 27. Then Jim Morrison of The Doors died at 27 and the legend began to solidify. Along went Dave Alexander of The Stooges, Pete Ham of Badfinger, Pete DeFratis of Echo and the Bunnymen and of course Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. More recently the club has claimed Richie Edwards of the Manic Street Preachers, Amy Winehouse in 2011, Richard Turner of Friendly Fires also in 2011 and of course the band Viola Beach in a horrible accident in 2016. A lot of people point at drinks and drugs, but a lot of the members of the 27 Club died in freak accidents or were even murdered. There's a lot of crazy conspiracies out there, including that the musicians sold their soul to the devil. Sure. Next up, we have the horrible tale of Operation Wandering Soul at number three. This is pretty awful on behalf of the Americans in the Vietnam War. The war went on from 1955 to 1975 and both sides of the fight used torture techniques to try and best their enemies. The Americans employed the use of spooky song to scare their enemies. Back then a lot of the Vietnamese believed that their dead needed to be buried in their homeland and if they were not buried according to the correct ritual and sacrifice their souls would be doomed to wander aimlessly. US sound engineers used their advanced technology to record eerie sounds and they played them around enemy lines. This was all with the purpose of scaring the enemy into fleeing their position. Helicopters were sometimes flown around to broadcast recordings to the Viet Cong. Basically, they played off their superstitions. The music and soundscapes were for tactical purposes, but many believe that by messing with the legends of the spirits, the Americans in turn cursed themselves when they played the sounds. Who knows? Robert Schumann was driven mad by his music at number two. German composer Robert Schumann went stark raving mad, and many believe the reason lay in his final works. This is now called Ghost Variations. What we know is that Schumann woke on a cold February night in the 1850s, driven by a force that compelled him to write a number of hymn like piano variations. As he tried to get his melody down on paper, he said he was dictated by angels, or perhaps even the ghost of himself. His religious like fever had taken a turn by morning, and he said that he heard demonic tigers and hyenas in his music. These ghost variations, or Geister variation in German, were the last thing that Schumann wrote before being committed to an asylum. He died two years years later age 46 and some people in the classical music sphere are very wary of the music even today. Finally we have a modern day cursed song that has apparently been sending kids mad or even worse. That's right, we have the legend of Lavender Town. Any Pokemon fans out there, you might already know this but the music 
that plays in Lavender Town in Pokemon Red and Green allegedly sparked an alarming number of child suicides in Japan. The music is undoubtedly spooky. Horrorblog Bloody Disgusting hailed it as one of the most terrifying childhood memories for gamers. The music has a number of jarring chords but it is weirdly calm. I think that we can all agree we wouldn't want to listen to it on a loop for too long. According to a creepypasta that surfaced in 2010, the music compelled 100 Japanese children to kill themselves. This also left others with weird behavioural outbursts and some others with physical ailments such as nosebleeds and severe headaches. Sicknesses and suicides became known as Lavender Town Syndrome. Legend has it that the high pitched binaural beats tapped into the brains of children in a way that could affect their moods. Whether or not it's true, it seems that Pokemon were worried. They re recorded the music for the 2017 Pokemon Go Halloween event. Suspicious, so like maybe don't listen to Lavender Town. My Way to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. There is a lady who's sure that all that glitters is gold. Played forward, Led Zeppelin's 1971 hit Stairway to Heaven is a beautiful melodic rock classic filled with divine references. Played backwards, and some people think that they can hear death and the devil and all of the bad things. It all started in 1981. Now, people had been happily listening to the track for 10 years without worrying about the effect it may have on their souls. This was when Michael Mills, a Michigan minister, appeared on a Christian radio. He denounced the track as Satanist propaganda. He said that when played backwards, phrases like Master Satan, hear me, there is no escaping it were hidden in the music. Allegedly, the song says, Here's to my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan, he will give those with him 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, sad Satan. I don't know, to me, this makes literally no sense. If the song was designed to brainwash people and lead them on a slippery slide to hell rather than a stairway to heaven as advertised, wouldn't they want to make their message a little less ambiguous? There is a dark urban legend surrounding this song. We have Love Roller Coaster by the Ohio Players. That's coming in to number nine. Your love is like a roller coaster, baby, baby, and I want to ride. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I love this song, it's too bad it's cursed, really, or something. Between 2 minutes and 32 seconds and 36 seconds, a high pitched scream can be heard. Some people say it's the sound of a rabbit being hit by a car outside the studio, although given studio soundproofing, that seems extremely unlikely. Other people straight up say it's the sound of someone being murdered. Some people say that the murder victim was Esther Cordet, the nude on the Honey album cover. People said that she was badly burned with the hot honey used for the photo shoot. And the band's manager stabbed her to death in the control room to stop her suing them. Again, that sounds pretty far fetched and also totally ludicrous because she's still alive. Whatever the situation is with this screaming, it's pretty freaky and sounds very haunting. This next song was subject to a civil lawsuit. Coming into number eight, we have Better By You, Better Than Me by Judas Priest. So, Better By You, Better Than Me was originally by a rock band called Spooky Tooth, but it was covered by Judas Priest in 1978, and the latter English metal band version was pretty popular in its day. While some love the power rock track, others were convinced it was cursed and led to a spate of suicides. I gave this one a listen and to be honest, it makes me want to like punch the air and thrash my hair like I just don't care rather than kill myself. Maybe I'm impervious to the curse though. Actually, I totally regret saying that now because it seems like something someone would say in a movie like, I'm impervious to the curse and then boom, dead. Anyway, Back to the song. The track was reportedly behind the suicide attempts of 19 year old Ray Belknap and 20 year old James Vance in Reno, Nevada. Now, this all went down in 1985 when Ray shot himself under his chin and died instantly. James survived but was severely disfigured and overdosed three years later. His parents claimed that the curse track made the young men do it. Now, the three week trial was heavily scrutinized by the music industry and eventually it was thrown out of court. Coming into number seven, we have Exit by U. Too. Does anyone else feel kind of sorry for Bono? Like, I do. Exit is by far one of the most disturbing U2 songs, and it makes sense because at the time, Bono was channeling the mind of a murderer when he wrote it. He admitted to reading Norman Mailer's The Executioner's Song and Truman Capote's In Cold Blood. In the book U2 by U2, Bono said, Exit was my attempt at writing a story in the mind of a killer. It's all very well to address America and the violence that is an aggressive foreign policy, but you really have to understand that you have to get under the skin of your own darkness the violence that we all contain within us. 
Well, it seems he channeled that darkness all too well and somehow poisoned the song with it. Other people felt the evil and the music lived inside them. Famously, murderer Robert Bardo claims that Exit was the inspiration behind his stalking and killing of 21 year old American actress and model Rebecca Schaffer. The 1987 track was a favourite for Brando and he would use it as motivation when he stalked the young woman for three years. Chillingly, he then murdered her in 1989 and when the song was played in the courtroom as evidence, he mouthed along with the lyrics, taking particular delight in the pistol weighing heavy bit. Ok, this is an entire cursed album and maybe beyond that, this could be an entire cursed band. At number 6 we have Bone Thugs and their album The Crossroads. I came across an article called Did the Ouija Board Curse Bone Thugs and the answer is like Maybe. Bone Thugs were a group of four Grammy award winning rappers in the 90s. When they were in their teens, they would play with an Ouija board to try and drum up some of the dark energy they wanted to portray in their sound. They released an album called Crossroads, which really showcased their darkness. A lot of people think that they can hear demonic voices peppered amongst the tracks. Scarier still, a shockingly high number of rappers who worked with Bone Thugs wound up dead. For example, Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., Easy E, and The Big Pun. Now, they all made music with the group and they all died. Not only that, they died between 1994 and 1997, which were the darker days for the band's sound. In 98, the band took an unexpected new direction in terms of their sound and seemingly the curse was lifted. Perhaps they brought back their souls from the devil, or maybe they make ritual sacrifices each year. Whatever works, I guess. Coming into number 5, we have the sad story of Jelly Roll Morton. Jelly Roll Morton is one of the most famous jazz musicians of all time, but like many musical legends, his time on earth was surprisingly short. He died aged 50. Jelly didn't always enjoy a successful music career, and sometimes he was prone to bad luck. Why? Well, Jelly suffered from bad juju. Juju, for those that don't know, is a West African belief in magic, and bad juju is the kind of bad energy a person gets from dabbling in dark magic. Jelly believed his godmother, a Creole woman, sacrificed Jelly's soul to Satan in a black magic ritual when he was a baby. His belief that he was cursed was heightened when he found coloured powder sprinkled around his office door. Down on his luck, he decided to quit music. Now, Eventually, after a worse turn of fortunes, Jelly visited a voodoo woman who told him to burn all of his clothes so he could regain some success. He did this and he did. Unfortunately, that was all until his godmother died, the woman who cursed him in the first place. He seemed to have always known that his fate was tied up with hers and he died very shortly after she did. We've talked about cursed songs, cursed bands, but what about cursed musical instruments? Behold number 4, we have Sir Francis Drake's drum. Many people know Sir Francis Drake as a seafarer, a naval captain, an explorer, and even a slave trader. Not many people know that his preferred seamate was a drum, dubbed Drake's drum. Drake's drum is a snare drum that accompanied the voyager on his journeys from 1577 until his death in 1596. As he lay dying off the coast of Panama, he ordered his drum be sent back to Buckland Abbey. He laid a curse upon the drum, vowing that if England was ever in danger, the drum should be beaten and he would emerge from heaven to defend the country. Now, The drum has now become part of English folklore and superstition. On several occasions throughout history since Drake's death, people have reported hearing the drum beat. Many claim it was heard when Lord Nelson was freed, and again when World War I broke out, and then again when the Imperial German Navy was defeated. The last time the drum was heard was during the successful Dunkirk evacuation. Coming into number 3, we have the band Sai and the Curse of Izangi. Sai are a Japanese extreme metal band from Tokyo, formed in 1989 and still rocking to this day. The band released a successful album called Scenes from Hell, and they recorded one of their tracks in Japanese. The Curse of Inzangi is a track all about a voodoo curse that condemns its victims souls to hell. It includes the lyrics, an infernal spell cast upon you trapped for eternity, it's your destiny, your fate lies in the cruelty of my eyes. Weirdly, as soon as the band started working on the Japanese version of the track, the owner of their music music label suddenly and unexpectedly commits suicide. The band lead singer Mirai Karashima said that it was the second time that someone involved with the song had died, so unfortunately they would actually banned the song, they shelved it ever since. He said it was simply just too sinister. Coming into number 2, Beware El Silbon, The Whistler. In Colombia and Venezuela there is a legend of El Silbon, a lost soul who whistles. According to the legend, the whistling spirit is a young boy who killed his father after he was abusing his mother. 
other. Afterwards the boy was tied to a post and lashed. He was then set upon by starving and rabid dogs and condemned to carry his father's bones for all eternity. This he apparently does, and hearing his whistles foreshadows your own death. The whistle goes from musical notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B in that order. Now it rises in tone to F and then lowers to B. When the whistle sound is close, there's no danger, but when the sound sounds faint and far away, you should be very afraid because actually this means that El Silbon is nearby. Apparently the only way you can survive is if you hear a dog bark within 60 seconds of the whistling. You can also keep the whistler at bay by keeping a chili on you. Sounds fair. Songs and poetry are very closely linked, with a lyricism occurring in poems that could be easily translated into music. Next up, we have a poem that causes death if you read it aloud. Because of all of this drama and assured death, Tomino's Hell is coming into number one. Tomino's Hell is a Japanese poem that reportedly causes death and tragedy if you read it aloud, so just don't do it. The poem tells the story of a young boy's damnation, and was seemingly written in 1919 by a Japanese professor living in France. It seems the poem may have originally been written for children, but it's super unsettling. The English translation is a bit patchy and is quite scary to read, and obviously I'm not about to read it aloud and you shouldn't either because I don't want to be cursed. It does mention vomiting blood and the blackest of hells though. Good. Good. At number 10 we have every breath you take, the police. Ok let's start this list off with an easy one. This one might have slipped under the radar for some of you, but a lot of us have picked up on the hidden meaning behind this song. The lead singer Sting bellows out the lyrics, every move you make, every breath you take, I'll be watching you. On the surface it comes off as a nice love song about a guy who has maybe too much admiration for his new girlfriend. I understand you love, but you definitely can take it too far. Like those couples who make out in public all the time, like stop. We get it. You found someone to spend the rest of your life with. Don't remind us all that we're gonna die alone. I don't need to see that stuff. Well, the actual meaning of this song is much creepier. Sting wrote this song about his obsession with his ex wife. The wife which he left for her best friend. Oh my god, this is hot tea, baby. Apparently, he couldn't get over her and he actually started stalking her a little bit. Also, he had to deal with all the drama of banging your wife's best friend. Oh my god, like I said, hot tea. Number nine, where are you now, Justin Bieber. Let's move on to the biggest pop star in the world. Is he still the biggest? I don't know. Or is Ariana the biggest now? I don't know. Have you ever been able to pinpoint the moment when you feel old? Well, this one isn't so much the song, but the music video. And these things kind of go hand in hand. I'm going to be throwing a few music videos onto this list because I think they fit. In this music video, we have Justin Bieber dancing around, singing like the prodigy that he is. And there's a bunch of vivid imagery that gets flashed onto the screen. Most of it is just jumbled garbage, but there are some suspicious suspicious pictures. A lot of it has to do with the Illuminati. Whoa. We see shots of Bieber with the famous eyeball in the pyramid, and he seems to put up the triangle symbol with his hands. At certain points there's satanic crosses on his forehead and other images of devil worship. These things flash on screen so fast they're super hard to see, but if you want to dive deep into this there are a ton of slow motion videos of this music video. At number 8 we have 99 Luff Balloons. Yeah, the German pop song that you probably heard at every wedding. It's hard to accept that the song is actually pretty dark because it sounds like something that every kid in the 80s had their first kiss to. But this song is actually about nuclear holocaust. The song goes, the panic bells, it's red alert, there's something here from somewhere west. The war machine springs to life. Basically it's about a ton of red balloons being mistaken for an attack causing the Germans to fire the first nukes. And then everyone else responds with their own nukes. I mean this song would make me feel bad if it wasn't so damn catchy. At least if you get the horrific message that there's an oncoming nuke strike, you know what song to put on. At number 7 we have Imagine by John Lennon. This one is going to blow your mind. We all know the song Imagine by John Lennon. It's supposed to represent peace and people living together happy. Well more like living under the hammer and sickle. Mother Russia is coming for you. Putin is in your emails. Yeah the song Imagine has a bunch of lyrics that line up with the communist manifesto. No way you might say. Lennon was a socialist, not a communist. Well in this song he talks about living in a world with no countries, no religions or possessions. That's 
Communist 101, baby. China's controlling the internet. That's what's going on. So maybe this is us interpreting the song the wrong way, or maybe Lenin had a secret communist agenda, wanted to convert Americans into being comrades with the East. At number six, we have Black Star with David Bowie. Rest in peace to one of the greatest musical icons who ever lived. He made being androgynous cool and probably kept the world eyeliner business afloat for years. Some of his tracks are my favorite songs of all time, and it's hard to find a single person who hasn't heard one of his songs. Now, his final album, Black Star, was released just two days before the pop star moved on to the big stage in the sky, and there were some songs of there that might have given a hint to his passing. For those of you who don't know, David Bowie was battling with cancer throughout the production of his final album, so he would have been well aware of his impending death. In the title song, Black Star, he says, Spirit rose a meter and stepped aside. It seems to me that he was telling everyone that it was his time to move on. So if your grandparents ever start playing songs from this album, you might want to start spending more time with them. Also, another fun fact about David Bowie, he died at age 69. Nice. At number five, we have Firework, Katy Perry. The song Firework is about how everyone is special and you should feel good no matter who you are. Yeah, just like the song Beautiful by Christina Aguilera and like millions of other pop songs out there. In reality, no one cares about you. You're all going to die and be forgotten. Go back to work in your cubicle and make an emotional post on Facebook. Jesus, why did I get so dark right there? But there is a hidden message in the song Firework by Katy Perry. Katy told Billboard magazine that the song isn't just about self-love, but what Katy wants done with her remains. She said after she dies, she wants to be cremated. Okay, that's pretty normal. And she wants her ashes spread across an ocean. Once again, pretty normal. Not that strange yet. But she doesn't just want someone to toss her ashes. No, 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 no. She's a famous pop star. She wants her ashes to be shot out of a firework over the ocean in a giant explosion of bright lights and human remains. That's the most extra shit I have ever heard of. That's like a Viking funeral covered in pressed nails. Good night, sweet prince. At number four, we have Evil Eye by Ash. This song seems to be about a guy who has a very strange relationship with women. Evil Eye came out in 2004, and it's about a dude who can't stop thinking about a girl because she's using some sort of witchcraft to work her way into his mind. A song about a dude obsessed with women has already been covered on this list, but wait, there's more, and it's pretty juicy. Evil Eye decided to include a little thing called backmasking. Now, what on earth is backmasking? This is when you put a hidden message in a song that can only be heard when you play it in reverse. This was common back in the 70s and 80s when people were worried about the devil using music to corrupt youth. And the message left in the song was, she's giving me evil eye, suck Satan's C-O-C-K. Doesn't say C-O-C-K, but I guess you guys at home can figure it out. Cause I know you all know how to spell, and if you don't know how to spell, just Google it. I'm just kidding, don't Google it. At number three, we have Electric Light Orchestra. Yeah, these guys apparently have some cursed songs. You know the group of hippies who have songs that are all about love and happiness? They secretly want you to worship Satan and give your life to the Dark Lord. Well, that's what a bunch of Christians thought back when their 1974 album El Dorado came out. This was when the backmasking craze was at an all time high. A group of religious fanatics said they found the lyrics, he's the nasty one, Christ infernal. Maybe this is true, and pretending to be peace-loving hippies was the perfect cover. Well, Electric Light Orchestra thought it was ridiculous, so just to mock all of these people for accusing them, they filled their next album with friendly backmasking messages like, thank you for listening. That's so cool. At number two, we have Pumped Up Kicks, Foster the People. This one's kind of out in the open. You don't need to play the song in reverse or translate it into another language. You just have to listen to the words that they're saying, and to be honest, I don't usually do that when I listen to music. But if you read a transcript of the song, you would quickly realize that even though this song is fun to listen to and is incredibly catchy, it's actually about school gun violence. There's lyrics like, Robert's got a quick hand, and better run, better run, outrun my bullets. The song is supposed to be from the viewpoint of a kid who suffers from a mental disorder and is having thoughts about killing people in his school. If we even go deeper into this, you'll find out that the bassist in the band survived the Columbine shootings. And at number one, we have Helter Skelter, one of the lesser known Beatles songs that you've probably never heard unless you're a huge fan or you're well informed of what I'm about to tell you. Some of the most famous murders in American history are the Tate LaBanca murders. They were orchestrated by infamous cult leader Charles Manson, and he claimed that he got his posse of butchers to commit these crimes from a message that he heard in the song Helter Skelter. Charles Manson believed that there was an upcoming race war between white and black people in America and that the Beatles knew about it, confessing it 
in the song Helter Skelter. Manson thought that these high profile crimes would be blamed on young black men, sparking the start of this war. This would bring the destruction of American society and after this destruction Manson and his followers would move in as the new leaders of the USA. Was this message actually embedded in the song Helter Skelter? Well, probably not. But now it's forever linked to old Charlie Manson.